Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is David Farrar, and I'm the president of McMaster University, and it's my pleasure to be here at the Michael G. DeGroote Center for Learning and Discovery, and as you can see behind me at the David Braley Center for Antibiotic Discovery. We wouldn't be doing the kind of research we're doing here at Mac without the support of terrific donors. I'd like to start by acknowledging that we're situated on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and the Haudenosaunee Nation within the lands protected by the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Agreement. I'm joined here by Dr. Jerry Wright, Director of the Michael G. DeGroote Institute for Infectious Disease. And I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to our minister, Minister Romano. Uh, minister, I wish we were together in person uh, rather than virtually. I wish you were here with us at the DeGroote Center, but given the uh, rise of COVID-19 infections in our communities, uh, we're doing this virtually and it's our pleasure to be here with you. McMaster has been named Canada's most research intensive university for three years in a row. And we are the country's leader in infectious disease research and innovation. And that's why we're pleased to host today's announcement. So with that, I'd like to pass it over to Minister Romano. Thank you very much, David, for that introduction. And uh, I am 100% with you, David. I wish I was there with you today as well. I know we've, uh, we've wanted to try to make this announcement a few times now, and unfortunately, uh, we're battling a, a crisis right now uh, that, uh, that has been obviously a very difficult one. And uh, quite frankly, given the announcement we're here to make today, um, it's, uh, it, it's really a good, uh, a good example of, of the importance of the announcement we're here to make today. And so uh, thank you so much, Dr. Farrar. It's been a pleasure working with you for the last, uh, for the last year and a half since I uh, was uh, successful in becoming minister uh, in the uh, Ministry of Colleges and Universities. I got to know you on one of the first days uh, after uh, joining, and I know you were uh, uh, fairly new into the, the spot as well. So um, it, it's been uh, one, uh, it's been uh, a roller coaster to say the least. Uh, so excited to be making uh, this announcement here today. I just wanna say that working with McMaster University and you, uh, Dr. Farrar has been um, just an absolute privilege and an honor for me. The work that is going on at McMaster University is phenomenal. Uh, you are leaders, not in Ontario, you're leaders in the world. Um, and well, obviously you're a leader in Ontario being a world leader, but the work that, uh, that McMaster is doing is continually putting our province on the map as leaders in post-secondary education, uh, leaders in research in the entire world. And we're so very proud to have uh, an institution like McMaster uh, as a part of our team um, uh, in Ontario. And so uh, without further ado, I'm uh, very proud to announce that our government is investing $1 million in research to support the creation of the Canadian Compound Library for Antibiotic Discovery at the David Braley Center for antibiotic discovery here at McMaster University, uh, which I like to reference as the antimicrobial lab. Uh, this investment is going to help uh, develop and discover the next, genera uh, next generation of antibiotics that's gonna help us in our global fight against antibiotic resistance. The World Health Organization has noted that antibiotic resistance is one of the most urgent health threats facing our world today. Uh, which uh, in simple terms means that there's a lot of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot of uh, health needs out there, uh, a lot of infections that are getting a lot harder to treat every single day. Uh, things like tubular sclerosis, pneumonia, and so many, uh, so many others uh, are getting harder to treat uh, because the antibiotics that we used are becoming less effective. And COVID-19 is another perfect example of this. And so this research is going to help develop guidelines that can be used by researchers that, is, uh, that are gonna accelerate antibiotic drug discoveries, development, and create a my, antimicrobial chemical library that is gonna help us develop and disseminate online education modules that are gonna help provide information and in antibiotics to the people of Ontario, to our researchers and to our clinicians across this whole province. And what makes this um, and from my perspective and from a lot of lay people's perspectives, the most important aspect of this is that 
We here in Ontario, we know the great work that is being done at an institution like McMaster and so many others across the province. You've heard me say this before, I'll say it again. We have the best universities in the world. We are leaders in research and McMaster is at the absolute front and center of that. Just look to COVID-19 again, the first person to develop uh, or to identify the strain of COVID-19 uh, was uh, from um, McMaster. Uh, Karen uh, Mossman and your team uh, at Mac were able to first identify that strain. The work that is being done on a world stage is incredible. You are changing the world every single day. And we're so proud to have a part of that, uh, to have you in our province and to be able to work with you. You've heard the Premier say before that never again do we want to become reliant on other places to help us when we know what we have in our own province. We've got the best and the brightest here in Ontario, and we wanna do everything we can to support you. And at an institution like McMaster, the way you leverage uh, you know, the, 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 the investments that we make is incredible. And the work that you're doing is, is phenomenal. And we just wanna continue supporting uh, institutions like yours so that you can continue to do the amazing work you do to help keep us all safe, to help us find the new innovations, the new technologies that are gonna drive job growth, health and safety, and ensure that we can do the things that we know we can do right here at home in our own province without being reliant on others. And I just, I'm so proud of the work you've been doing. It's been, a, as I've said, just a privilege and an honor to have worked with you since my first day on the job, uh, Dr. Farrar, David. And um, <clears throat> I just can't wait to see the next big development that's going to come from McMaster University. I know that there's, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when, and I'm hoping it's extremely soon. And so keep up the amazing work, everyone. Uh, you've got such a gem um, uh, at McMaster University, uh, certainly in the Hamilton area and uh, within the province and within the entire country. We're so proud to have you here. Keep up the amazing work, everyone. Thank you, Minister. It's great news and it's great to hear the confidence that you have in us. Our researchers are anxious to hit the ground uh, running and to start to move forward in this area. So it's now my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Jerry Wright. Thank you, David, and thank you, Mr. Romano, for your announcement and your confidence in our group, um, we won't let you down. Um, this investment is really going to go a long way to, um, to advance the kind of research that you alluded to that is an antimicrobial resistance and actually an anti-infective drug discovery uh, writ large. It is uh, going to place McMaster, uh, as you said, at the, at the top of the province, but also in the, in, as a leader in the world to be able to do these kinds of studies. The David Braley Center, which you see behind me, is, uh, is a hotbed of research and activities and trying to solve the, the most uh, challenging problems in infectious disease. And researchers here, and then the DeGroote Center for Infectious Disease Research, and then the Boris Center for Medicinal Chemistry, have really pivoted over the last eight months to tackle the biggest challenges that we're all fa uh, facing right now, which is COVID-19, and we're working uh, night and day to help uh, solve that problem. And this investment is gonna help spur those efforts and we're really uh, grateful for that to happen. The investment is really gonna be used for two things. One is the development of online educational programs. This is a program led by Dr. Don Barush, who is gonna help us um, retrain researchers from other parts of uh, science to be able to pivot towards infectious disease problems like this when they, when they hit. The other element and the lion's share of the funding is going to, as you said, the, the, these, um, the, the establishment of this new chemical library. So what's a chemical library? It's, if you think of drugs, drugs are made up of, of small subunits, kind of like a Lego set. And if you think of uh, the kinds of uh, elements that come together to make a car or to make a, a house in your Lego, these elements that are part of, of making drugs are essential. The challenge that we have is that all the libraries that we have available to us and that have been focused on in the world were not designed for inf infectious disease. They're designed for other drugs, drug elements. But right here at Mac, we have one of the world leaders in understanding how to develop such libraries. And that's Dr. Eric Brown, who's been leading this fight for several years. And together with his team consisting of Dr. Jake McGolan, they're really gonna take this, this 
investment that you provided uh, for us and, uh, and take this to the next level and really make McMaster and Ontario a center uh, or a, a central component of this. We're, we're building the first library to be able to make these kinds of drugs in the world with this investment. The big picture that's all part of this is that we are trying, or we are establishing, Frank, at McMaster, the um, global nexus um, for pandemic research and preparedness. And this, um, this um, library is going to be a central component of this in new initiative. This initiative will seek to bring uh, researchers from with a multiple different skill sets, infectious disease, chemistry, physics, math, social sciences, humanities, to, together to tackle the biggest problems in infectious diseases that we face today, including, as we are all experiencing, the terrible pandemic of COVID-19. This is going to, uh, this nexus is going to going to put us in a position to attract the best talent. It's going to keep the talent that we have here in Ontario, and we're really going to put uh, Mc, uh, McMaster, Hamilton, and Ontario on the map on a global scale to be able to be at the uh, leaders in infectious disease research. Now I'd like to turn things over to McMaster's uh, Vice President of Research and a world-leading virologist, Karen Mossman, who's going to tell us a little bit more about the Global Nexus. Thanks, Jerry, and congratulations. And a big thank you to Minister Romano, to you personally, and also to your government for the investment that will help move McMaster forward in its fight against antimicrobial resistance and in infectious disease research. This will help research not just at McMaster, but across Canada and internationally. I'm here at McMaster Innovation Park with Ty Shuddock, the CEO. We're standing at the gateway of what will become a state-of-the-art research centre, the global nexus for pandemic and biological threats. At the core of McMaster's research is a vast knowledge that spans all disciplines. And this is really going to be essential for us to combat the current COVID crisis and future pandemics and crises, economic, social, and biological. We're not just building a building here, we're building an ecosystem. An ecosystem that will allow us to engage stakeholders both locally and globally. An ecosystem that will allow us to do research, but also create spin-out opportunities and economic opportunities that will impact the region, the country, and the world. And we're doing that on top of 10 years of success. 10 years of success of being a bridge between academia and industry. Within this 300,000 square feet facility, we'll have researchers collaborating with engineers, collaborating with business people from the country and from around the world. So McMaster University is uniquely positioned to drive both the science and evidence-based policy decisions and to lead the global nexus to enable us to better prepare, not just for Ontarians, Canadians, but for the world at large for the next pandemic. Minister, I hope that you, this has given you a sense of how pivotal your investment today is going to be in, in helping us not only establish this library and these new educational modules, but also launch this nexus, the global nexus here in Ontario. We are positioned um, as never before to really take a global leadership position in infectious disease uh, response. And with your support and the support of your government, we are incredibly uh, proud and pleased to, to, uh, to accept it. So, Minister, back to you. I muted myself, sorry. Uh, as I said, uh, when we last spoke together, uh, I, I had all the confidence in the world uh, long, uh, long, before, uh, long before this announcement here. So uh, I know the incredible work you're all doing and uh, I can't wait to, uh, to see the finished product and uh, to see us move forward uh, to make that next big uh, breakthrough. Uh, here in Ontario, and on behalf of uh, on behalf of the entire world, because that's that's who's going to be impacted by the decisions, uh, by the work, uh, sorry, that is being done uh, here uh, here at McMaster. So thank you for everything. We all owe you a huge, uh, huge, huge debt of gratitude. Thank you. 
Thanks, everyone. Um, we'd like to open it up to questions now from the media. Uh, so just as a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please notify me in the chat um, and I will call on you and we will unmute you. Uh, so first up, we have uh, Teresa from Omni Television. Good afternoon, everybody. So my question would be, how effective have our institutions have been in rising up to help fight COVID-19? They have been so incredible. Thank you for that question. If you go back to the start of COVID-19, Teresa, um, the, our institutions, when we were all struggling to put together PPE, uh, so many of our institutions donated hundreds of thousands of articles of, of PPE to the province, uh, to our healthcare facilities, uh, locally within the communities they represent. Uh, in addition, they started producing PPE and did so uh, at just incredible speeds to help us out. Uh, they have been providing so many human resource uh, supports to, to us uh, during, uh, during this period. Additionally, recently, uh, with respect to the testing capacity uh, issues that we are dealing with, uh, the uh, the post-secondary institutions here in Ontario have stepped up to the plate yet again and are continually to be uh, continuing to be supportive. Uh, the work that is being done at so many of our institutions, some of our research institutions, has been phenomenal. As I noted earlier, uh, it was uh, Karen who we saw in the video just a moment ago and her team, um, uh, research team at McMaster's uh, at McMaster University, who first identified uh, the strain for COVID-19. The work that you're seeing here through this antimicrobial lab is going to assist us um, moving forward in, in so many other uh, areas of uh, disease control and infection control. This is, um, we have the best and brightest right here in Ontario. You do not need to look beyond what our own universities um, and uh, post-secondary uh, sector and research sector in this province brings to the table when it comes to keeping us all um, safe, keeping us all uh, in the position to be innovative and have the best uh, education available. Uh, we have the best and brightest right here in Ontario um, and uh, they just continue to demonstrate it over and over and over again. So I can't extend enough thank yous to uh, the uh, university and the college sector here in Ontario and to all the faculty that are working within our institutions to ensure that students are getting the best the best education and even in times like these where they've had to work exceptionally hard to find ways to uh, assist students in learning in a different way where where we've had to move to an online learning format and then to a hybrid format and different uh, different forms of that in between uh, it's been awesome and it's an absolute privilege to be able to uh, be the minister uh, of a sector that is doing so much to support us um, uh, all the time and most certainly during this period that has been so difficult for us all. Thank you. Um, do you have a follow up? Yes. Yeah, so um, with this significant increase in COVID-19 testing in the province, could the system make more use of medical students? That is something that we are, in fact, looking at right now. Um, we have been uh, on this uh, for quite some time. The Premier uh, had contacted uh, myself uh, about this um, in order to uh, to speak with our uh, our, our post secondary sector, um, uh, Dr. Farrar was uh, was part of a call that I had with presidents across all of Ontario. I guess about uh, 10, 10 or twelve days ago, uh, and we've been working together ever since. Uh, we've been uh, working very closely through the um, the, uh, the organizations, Colleges Ontario and the Council of Ontario Universities, and individually uh, individually with each of the presidents at each of our schools uh, and the research departments within them. Uh, we are continuing to work towards that, uh, Teresa, and uh, I, I have every confidence in our sector being able to come up with uh, uh, solutions to assist the province, and so many of them already are. Uh, it's just a matter of, as I said to uh, to uh, everyone uh, in the um, to all of the executive heads of our institutions that 12 or so days ago, um, you stepped up to the plate for us when we needed help with PPE, and we need you to step up to the plate again. And I know you will, and they have been, and we continue to work on on this uh, moving forward. Um, I, I don't think there's anyone more equipped to support us and our frontline workers 
in our in our fight against COVID-19. Thank you. Um, up next, I see Adam Atkinson from CHCH. Hi, this is for the minister. How big of a factor was COVID-19 in the decision to give this million dollars to McMaster University? Uh, well, thank you very much for that question, Adam. And um, I'm proud to say that uh, while it is such a big factor that we are now in COVID-19, the decision to move forward in this regard um, uh, was, was, was made exclusively uh, outside of COVID-19. And um, that was because we already saw the incredible work that is happening at McMaster. I had the privilege of uh, visiting with our premier uh, in the early days uh, of, uh, of uh, my mandate here in the ministry a little over, I guess, 14 or 16 months ago now. And um, the work that is happening at McMaster University is just phenomenal. Um, and uh, they are uh, an absolute gem here in Ontario and in Canada and in the world uh outstanding institution so i could i could unequivocally state that the work that is happening at mcmaster and the, the financial uh commitment that has been made here today um was not because of covid 19 uh, but certainly um uh, certainly the the work that is being done uh here at mcmaster is helping us through covid 19. and i have a follow-up uh for dr jerry wright if that's possible Please, yes. Is he going to be on the screen? <laughs> I think we would have that arranged here. Jerry, uh, there? So I'm here. Doctor, uh, if you could just kind of simplify in, in uh, normal terms where this money will go and, and what kind of research will be done because of it. Yeah, thanks for that, Adam. So as I said, there's two elements to this investment. The first is, is is one of the things that of course we do great best at in a university is education and one of the what we've realized is that a lot of there's a lot of indiv of highly skilled people out there who have skills in other areas but would like to transition into infectious disease research but they lack some of the uh, basic background and, and what have you and now as we've all learned that we can provide a lot of this information in a virtual format so we're going to develop some platforms and in 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 to enable to entice uh, researchers from other parts of uh, of the scientific endeavor to be able to contribute to infectious disease research and and certainly what we've seen in the COVID uh, pandemic um, is that we really need more than just folks like me. We need economists, we need social scientists, we need uh, engineers, we need clinicians, everyone working together to help solve a problem like this. And oftentimes the barriers across disciplines can be a challenge and this educational platform will help breach those barriers. The other element in the, in the, the, the where most of the investment is going to occur is in the development of this library of chemicals and behind me, you will see there's there's a, a laboratory that is chock full of robots that is able to screen or, or to sample thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of compounds to try and find that needle in a haystack that will, that will kill the infectious organism uh, that we're looking at. In fact, right now, these machines are working to try and find interventions against COVID-19. What we're gonna be able to do with this, with this investment is build a library of chemicals. So we'll think of it as a collection of chemicals that don't exist right now. That are, these things are now gonna be developed rationally to directly tackle infectious organisms. Most of the compounds that we have out there to sample come from other parts of the drug industry. This is purpose built just for this, uh, this case. And because we can now team it up with all of the infrastructure that we have available in the Braley Center and in the Groot uh, Institute, we're, we're gonna be in a position that no one else is uh, on the planet right now to really dig very deep into the specific kinds of chemicals that we know will have activity against these infectious organisms. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions or any hands raised. Um, so if that is the case, then I believe that concludes today's announcement.
Thank you very much, uh, Nick, and thank you again, everyone. Thank you, uh, Dr. Farrar and uh, uh, Dr. Wright um, and uh, Dr. Mossman, wherever you are, Mr. Dean. Thanks, everyone. Keep up the amazing work uh, and keep on putting on uh, Ontario uh, on the map uh, and the entire world. Thank you. Thank you for your trust. Thank you.